Hi, my name's Josh Reed. I'm a design and engineering consultant. And this is the Deep Blue. This is the world's, currently the world's largest pipe lay vessel. It's the world's largest in the sense that it can support the greatest weight of pipe because when you're laying pipe to a very deep level, you've got the whole pipe to, to sort of hanging off it. So at the moment, I'm working on a project to build a clamp to support that pipe for a larger vessel that's going to be a larger vessel operated by ASAG, who is one of the big offshore subcontractors. The image to the bottom is a uh, image of the stresses that are formed inside the clamp, which clamps with 14,000 tons of squeeze pressure to support this load. This is a, a marine energy project I've worked on. This is a, a uh, e electricity generation device. The waves sort of crash in the front here, form a vortex here, and they're taken out through a turbine. This was supported by the Carbon Trust. Um, unfortunately, the project ran for a certain degree of time, and it was then abandoned uh, because the device wasn't efficient enough. This is really to illustrate what uh, would have w would have been heaven for me when I was about 13. I spent a lot of time going around skips and pulling out anything I could and making things from it, turning it into something making bases and you know contraptions and things. The wave energy device that I'd worked on previously led on to another device, which was uh, this wave turbine. Wave energy is all about trying to change a reciprocating motion into a constant linear motion, which you can produce useful electrical power from. You can't produce electrical power that's coming in spikes as waves are. It's got to be constant. Another one of my clients in my engineering consulting work are, have designed a safe door hinge. I've worked with them since their company was founded. They produced a model in our workshops which won a Ideal Home Best New Product. They've launched two products since then, uh, which you can't, children can't trap their fingers in, and I'm working on another project for them now. When I was, uh, a few years ago, when I was at school, my, one of my projects was a jukebox. This is a view of the, there are, on the right-hand side, these are CDs, which are stacked up on plastic plates and had all sorts of mirrors and things. It's a kind of uh, um, my inception into control um, of, of, uh, of things. This is a product which uh, my company has um, been developing over probably the past two and a half years. It's a rapid prototyping machine for translating 3D designs which you can make on the computer into a tangible 3D model. Um, the machine has the versatility in terms of geometries and shapes that it can make of some of the newer technologies like 3D printing, but it also has the range of materials which you can use in a subtractive modeling process. So you can make models out of woods, out of uh, plastics, and what have you. Um, spare time projects, uh, build a bike that uh, you can go from an upright riding position to a recumbent position while you're riding along. The recumbent position is much more efficient because your blood's not having to pump as high, your aerodynamics are much improved, and um, there are various other advantages, but it's very hard to get moving once you're, you know, because the center of gravity is so low. And, this is a kind of thing to try and address some of these issues. So those are, this is the business that I work for. I've got two colleagues there. One of them is a software engineer. The other one is a more, slightly more kind of designy guy than myself. And I'm in the middle as a sort of mechanical engineer. This is a view of sort of half of our workshop where we've got all the machines. And the other half, we've got a sort of build area where we get up to our tricks. Um, I'm quite a practical guy, like to get my hands dirty and the projects as well as um, undertaking the more theoretical engineering design aspects. Um, I lived in Egypt for a year on a houseboat on the Nile. This is just to the western side of Zamalek, which is an island in the Nile right in the middle of Cairo. I lived on the top left hand, uh, kind of this four flats there. I lived with another guy on the top left hand side. Um, and this was... Uh, out towards, near, up near one of the markets where I used to buy a lot of things. I ran a textile workshop for North African refugees there, and I used to have to go in the bar, around the markets and buy bits of cloth and buckles and what have you for them to make bags and all the things that they did. Um, and I loved the kind of the life there and that kind of thing. Um, when I was young, I did an art project at school, ripping off the work of Escher and still doing the same thing. And uh, 
I was really inspired by the tessellations and fascinated by all of the um, how you could work the the geometries and um, into each other. And uh, I always thought that I should have probably been born in another age. Maybe a kind of Victorian age would have suited me better. Um, for kind of some of the more harebrained ideas which um, sometimes I have. I get involved in a wide range of projects um, and uh, nothing quite as unusual as that. Um, this is Buckminster Fuller, another sort of um, hero, if you like, of mine. This is his map of the world, which is the, so he claimed, the truest projection which can be translated from a spherical mapping to a two-dimensional mapping. So you can form that, you can build that up into a kind of spherical shape, and it's better than the Peters or the Mercatia projections. He was also a great um, navigator and a sailor and a polymath in general and got involved in a lot of politics and things. And I enjoy sailing too. Um, in a month's time, I'll be sailing down from Shetland down to Wick on the northeast coast, and I'm looking forward to have sailed many other places as well. And uh, this was a book which my grandfather, who was born in Glasgow and grew up on the banks of the Holy Loch, was given as a prize for building a model ship uh, probably 90 years ago. It was my great-grandfather, actually, who was called Ernest Reed. And four weeks ago, I was lucky enough to be blessed with a son. This is Ernest Reed. So that's the end of my talk. <laughs>